study in the letters of John. After we finished uh, studying the books of the Thessalonians, and uh, we believe that this is what now is next, because um, this letter, or these letters, speak concepts, principles to us that we need um, as a church today. Um, usually when we talk about someone, um, we would know that we're talking about the right person with the right characteristics. For example, if I say, do you know Carmelo de Baker. Oh, yes, I know Carmelo de Baker. You know Carmelo as de Baker. And you may know his family, you may know uh, his friends. And that will help you whenever you talk about Carmelo de Baker, you will have a picture of his life and how he thinks. And you say, oh, Carmelo would think like that, or would, Carmelo would say like that. And this is why Carmelo says this, and this is why Carmelo says that. And therefore, like we always do, when we're talking about John, we need to know who John is. When ask, you know who John is? Yes, John the Apostle. He wrote, you know, the Gospel, he wrote the letters, and he wrote the Book of Revelation. But what do we know more about him? The Bible tells us quite a lot about John, and I'm just going to have a little uh, overview of what the Bible says about John, so that when we study the actual text, then we will realize and we will know why he's writing what he is writing. The style of his writing, the approach of his writing, his choice of words, we know because of who this John is. So who is John? John is someone that had a personal experience with Jesus Christ. That, that, that underlies everything. And what he learned from Jesus is evident in the way he wrote the gospel and the way he wrote the letters. And that is why when we read the scriptures that we have, um, I, I chose these scriptures just out of many to show the importance of having fellowship with God and with each other. This is extremely important. We live in a life, we live in a world that is totally um, girt. The mind is structured, has been wired in a way that I am the most important person in this room. I and me. Individualism. When the Bible speaks in, in a different way of thinking. So in 1 John chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, John says, We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may have fellowship with us. Underline the word fellowship. And our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. We write these things to make our joy complete. So what we have here is that his experience with Jesus, notice that we will talk about this in more detail when we go into the text, we proclaim, what John is proclaiming is what his own personal experience with Jesus Christ. 
And this experience with Jesus Christ taught him the importance of being in him or remaining in him, in him with the result of also the church remains together and as one body be in Christ. You heard me say several times before that there is a, when we read the word remain, especially in the letter of John, the first letter of John, the Greek word is telling us, you know, in words that we can easily understand, that that is your permanent address. So, we have a Greek word, meno, I remain, which basically it means, this is where I am. This is my permanent place. So when we're talking about remaining in God or remaining in fellowship, this is where I am. This is where I live. This is my life. So this is one of the key words we find in John, the letter of John, and we will be referring to these key words later on as we go through the book especially in our Bible studies. So Jesus had a personal experience, sorry, John had an experience, a personal experience with Jesus, and this personal relationship with him and with one another has been a very important point for him to mention. This is also the result of hearing Jesus pray. In the Gospel of John, the same person, we have what we call the Lord's Prayer, not the one we find in Matthew. You know, the, the real Lord's Prayer is this long chapter in 17, a very powerful chapter. And in verses 21 and 22, Jesus prayed in this chapter and saying that all of them may be one. What does that mean? One. If Jesus was speaking in Amaraic or in Hebrew, he would be using a word, Echad, which means united, like Manchester United. Why? Because there are seven prayers, and they are united together and trying to score goals. <laughs> this is the same word, this is the same word, Echad, where it says, Here, O Israel, the Lord your God is Echad, one united God. So this is a very about the Jewishness of Jesus, the Jewishness of John, and the Jewishness of the Gospel will help us realize the power, the importance of unity, of oneness in God, in Jesus, and with one another. When we studied the book of Ephesians, in chapter 1, we read about eight times, in him, in him, in him. You remember that? It's a repetition because Paul understood this concept of being in him, in Christ. In him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our existence. It's a very important concept in the Bible. <coughs> and that is why it's very important for us to meditate, to think, when we read the scripture, what it is saying about our relationship with Jesus, with the Father, obviously with the Holy Spirit, and it doesn't stop there, it goes with each other. You hear people say, it's even I've seen the post on Facebook, I love Jesus but not the church. You cannot say you love Jesus and then you don't love his body. 
But people try to come up with these memes thinking they are very spiritual, thinking they are very theological, but they have no idea what they are talking about. At last Tuesday during Bible study, we've seen how foolish some, some stupid some people are trying to show themselves how knowledgeable they are, but they have no idea what the Bible is truly saying. Then we have in 1 Corinthians 1 9. We say, God who has called you into fellowship, into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. That's another key word, faithfulness. Jesus is faithful. And he wants us to be faithful. When we studied Romans about um, when COVID started, like it, something like that. We emphasized the, the key factor of Romans, the righteous live by faith. And that word faith, as I know, is faithfulness. If even when you read it from the Old Testament, where it's first quoted, it says clearly that the just lives by his thankfulness. And we are just because Jesus, in his faithfulness, justified us by our faith in his blood. And that unity that we have is based on what Jesus accomplished for all of us on the cross. And that is why God has called us into fellowship with His Son. We broke bread a few minutes ago. What does that bread mean? What does it represent? And we say it represents the body of Christ. And in the book of 1 Corinthians, we also find that we are pieces of that one bread. Together, we become the body of Christ, the mystical body of Christ. And therefore, that is why it is important, it is critical, that we have fellowship with one another. The early church seen it as it is very important as well. We find this in the book of Acts in chapter 2, at the very end of that chapter, the last two or three verses. Because there it says that the church devoted itself, the people devoted themselves, a word which means totally giving themselves for prayer, for fellowship, we are studying for the breaking of bread, as we just mentioned, and of the teaching of the apostles by the studies and service and so forth. They gave themselves for that. They realized, they realized the importance of this fellowship. And therefore, you know, just to bracket these scriptures with another as one from John, see that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. Remember that word, remain? Meno, what does it mean? By permanent address. It would be very easy to remember. What I heard from God, what I experienced from God, when I study the Bible, when I read the scripture, when I pray the scripture, those things must have their permanent address in my soul. Do we get it? It's very important to understand this. So when we hear the word of God, we must keep it. The Bible says we guard it. Different words which are meaning the same thing. They are telling us the word of God must be 
being in my heart must, must be planted in our heart and must be kept. And John Revelation uses a special word which must be grasped and protected. When he says, those blessed are those who keep. That word keep is a very strong Greek word. You see, protect. Nobody must take away that word away from me. And we're living in a time that although these words were written 2,000 years ago, 2,020 years ago, about you know, 20 years ago, time might have been very long. Are still applicable for us today. And the reason we are saying these things is because when we read John, and when we recognize the problems, you know, John, John isn't writing a very nice letter about love. Many people call John the apostle of love. Of course, but as we will see, he's more than that. We will see soon. So when John is writing this first letter, he is writing it because he is trying to protect the church from a totally different gospel which sounds near, but yet it is not, and it is very dangerous. I will come to that, if not today, and next week. So, who is John? John is the son of Zebedee and the brother of James. Zebedee was the husband of Salmon. Salmon was the sister of Mary, the mother of Christ. And I said this this morning, I said, you come on Tuesday and you will see the scripture, we compare scripture. And if you can't wait till Tuesday, read the Gospels where it speaks about Jesus being crucified and who was before him and then compare the names and you will come with the answer. If you can wait, we will see it uh, together on Tuesday. He was called the disciple. Jesus called him the disciple. And by trade, he was a fisherman with his brother James. We understand that Zebedee had also employees with him, and therefore, it's safe to say that he comes from a business family. John and his brother James left the boats to follow Jesus when he called them. And when I first left them for several years, I suppose, when I used to read these things, they left everything and followed him. And I used to say, but well, if somebody comes and say, follow me, and I don't even know who he is. You know, how come they did How come did they, you know, let go of their job and so forth? But as I told you, they were cousins of Jesus. They knew Jesus. They heard John the Baptist preaching about their own cousin. Hallelujah. So they knew. And probably knew things that we don't know and we don't dare to imagine what they are and mention them because we cannot be sure. But when Jesus called them, they knew that the time for Jesus to go into ministry has arrived. Now, no wonder they were all excited and willing to let go of their job, and we find that even James was willing to let go of his life for the sake of righteousness. You know that he lost his head? He was, he was telling somebody who was living in adultery and having to be the king. Hmm. 
Jesus lived, uh, sorry, John lived in Capernaum, which was a main trading city, obviously, it connects um, the business uh, matter. And Jesus gave a nickname to his cousins, to James and to John. Do you remember the nickname? Children of Thunder. Huh? Children of Thunder. Which is a slogan for someone who would be short tempered. And I know exactly one person who was like that several years ago. That when something happens, I call fire from heaven to burn you. That's what I did. When the Samaritans would refuse actually to give hospitality to Jesus, they went to Jesus and told him, let's send fire from heaven. Instead, Jesus rebuked John and James. Interesting to know that later on, John and James went to the Samaritans to preach to them the gospel, and they received the Holy Spirit the baptism of the Holy Spirit from the same person that wished fire from heaven to earth. How things change when we meet with Jesus. Hallelujah. Imagine John, James, Peter going up this mountain. Some say it's Mount Hermon, some say um, Mount Tabor. If you go to Leia, don't say Hermon, you get in trouble. Just say Tabor, okay? You know what I mean? No, no, okay, because you're not from Leia, so you don't understand this, but I do. So just say a mountain. And if you want to choose one, say Tabor, because that's what they believe it was. But anyhow, that's besides the same thing. And on this mountain, they see Jesus glorified. Mama. Eh? Imagine seeing Jesus glorified with Moses and Elisha. He had this experience. And no wonder when he opens his letter, he is saying, listen, I am saying this on the basis of what I have seen and who I have touched. You cannot say that Jesus it's not God. I have seen him in his glory. Because he was writing to the church that was infiltrated with false teachers saying that Jesus is not God. But we'll come to that later on. Some other time. So basically. John and James were people of short temper, you know, wanting things to get done. Some of the travel makers. I, I'm just remembering when um, they heard that there were some people casting out demons, but they were not part of the twelve. And they told Jesus, stop them, stop them. And Jesus replied, those who are not against us are to us. So this type of person. And yet, you find him as a pillar of the church, together with Peter, the pillar in Jerusalem, the church in Jerusalem, they were called pillars by Paul of the church, and in the book of Acts, we find them together, working together, at least 27 times. That's an emphasis. When we see that kind of repetition in the Bible, it makes a signal. Peter and John worked together with the Jews. And they did so much work that Luke, the doctor, the one that wrote Acts, 
mentions them 27 times as partners in Christ. So this is John. This is the person that we'll be reading and studying this letter. The scriptures that we read and others will lead us to a team. Maybe you can come up with other teams and they will be good as well. But the team that we have chosen is having fellowship with the Father and the Son. A very important team, a very important topic that we need to have implanted first in our mind so that after we think and meditate on it, it goes down into our heart where it will find its permanent place. We, if we are truly believers in Christ, if we really believe in the Trinity, this is this morning we say about the Trinity or not? This morning we say about the Trinity? This morning. If we really believe in the Trinity, then that Trinity must be part of our life, our fellowship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit must be a real fellowship. Permanent. Not today, yes, and tomorrow, no, because something happened in between. I must have a permanent relationship with Jesus, in fellowship with Him. Koinere, I will study that word later on, we have time. And that same word is used so that we, in our independent mind, the way it's said, we, can also have fellowship with one another. This will help us, brothers and sisters, by the way. Especially when we see the day coming, what do we do? We remain apart or we get more closer together and meet more often together. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, meet more often and gives us a reason. Because things will be different, will be difficult, will be dangerous. And we know that in some countries today, it's very dangerous to be a Christian. Nigeria, I think you are from Nigeria, right? It's very dangerous to be in the north or the north. It's very dangerous to be a Christian in the north. Very dangerous. We know about Iraq, we know about Syria, we know about Afghanistan, we know about Iran. And we can say that's because our, there are Muslim countries. Really? Why can the liberals get mad? Oh, the liberal politicians, the liberal NGOs, that we already see their authority over us. Wait some more and you see that they will try to stop us. In fact, the law is already there for us to stop preaching what we believe. and we need each other. We will not survive on our own. We need each other. We need to devote ourselves to prayer. We need to devote ourselves to the breaking of bread. We need to, that means understanding, you know how we've been doing it lately, understanding what Jesus did for us. That's what the whole point. What Jesus has done for me, from what he saved me from. And if I wasn't that bad guy like Pastor Joe, it doesn't matter, you are still going to hell. You could be a good person and still go to hell because you don't have Jesus, you are not saved. This is something, I mean, if somebody put it on my, I was saying something on Facebook, uh, and this goes in 
lady put something that Jesus died for the Muslims, for the Jews, and for everybody, you know. As if trying to say, you're wrong, Jesus, Jesus only died for Christians. But Jesus didn't die for Christians, he only died for them. We were sinners. We were condemned to hell. Like Jews and Muslims and all the rest. And that's why the beautiful work of John, expressed in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16, of God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that whosoever believes, present active, indicative, it keeps on going, will have forever as a participant in the church. You dare, it's there, eternal life. And you will not. Thank you, Jesus. And this is the person we want to have fellowship with. This is what John is inviting us for. To have fellowship with Jesus. He leads us to the Father. He filled us with the Holy Spirit. And then we understand what the mystic in the church is. The importance of the church. For God himself. And how important it is for us. To be who we are supposed to be children of God. If you've read First John, you will have come across some of these scriptures that I've been quoting. So brothers and sisters, uh, the time is over, I feel the others. We will continue our study on Tuesday. We'll go into more details and um, some of the things I have said, some questions that you may have. And we will learn about the gracious God. John means Yahweh is gracious. And therefore, through his name, we can understand why grace is so important. To understand God's grace for us, so we can totally surrender to him. Amen. God bless you as you have fellowship with the Son and with the Father and with the Holy Spirit, and of course with one.